Next is the DMZ host. The DMZ option lets one computer on the network operate outside of the firewall. To do this, we would connect to the computer to one of the ports on the device the way we normally would, but then we'd enable the DMZ option here, and then we type the IP address of the computer that you want to be on the DMZ. For example, my server.200. Now this isn't really a true DMZ like you might set up in a corporate network in that the computer you place on this particular DMZ is completely open to the internet. Talk about demilitarized. It would be preferable to utilize the virtual servers and port redirection options on these types of devices for a higher level of security. And by the way, the virtual servers and port redirection options will take priority over the DMZ option. Unfortunately, when users have difficulties with ports and applications, they sometimes turn to this DMZ option, and sometimes not realizing that the computer is now completely open to the internet. It would be wise to spend some time understanding what is causing issues and causing your port redirection to fail before enabling this DMZ option. Also, if you use this DMZ option, it would be smart to use a static IP for the DMZ computer or give a reservation within the DHCP settings so that the DMZ computer always gets the same IP address and it removes some confusion. Next is Application Level Gateway Configuration or ALG. This deals with the special handling of payload information depending on the uh, application you're using. For example, if you're making a VPN connection with PPT, uh, PPTP or IPsec. Also, RTSP, which is real-time streaming protocol. Things like QuickTime and RealPlayer will use this. And there's also SIP, Session Initiation Protocol. Um, Voice over IP and other types of streaming phone services will use this.